friends, grown-ups especially. I know normally I am coming to talk to my friends, my littler friends, huh? But today we are going to be doing a video in a new series and this is going to be just for your grown-ups. It's not even for my friends. Grown-ups, I'm so sorry because this is how I actually talk. So you're going to hear me talking like this. It's not just for your kids. This is just how I sound. I'm sorry. All right. So grownups, I want to talk to you real fast about why we're doing this. Um, this is going to be a new video series that we're going to try to do weekly that is going to contain ideas for doing preschool at home. So I know a lot of us were hoping to send our kids to preschool. Same. I know. Um, a lot of us are still sending them to preschool, but maybe it's not as much time as they would have had before, or maybe we just wanna supplement what they're already doing. So normally at the library, I get to do a lot of supplementation with my Explore More story times. Um, I normally do story times at Worthington Park Library, and so we thought that maybe a way that we can help all of us in this really unprecedented time is to make little videos of some fun things that you can do at home. So that's a real quick why we're doing this. All right, I hope it helps a little bit. Here's a really fast all about me. Are you ready? Okay, my name is Lisa. I get to do all the story times at Worthington Park, like I said, but before I worked for the library, I taught preschool for a lot of years. And before I taught preschool, I was getting my degree in early childhood education. So I am a teacher, this is what I love to do. And what I'm the most passionate about is helping our younger friends get ready to start kindergarten and helping to fill in any gaps for parents. So I hope that this is helpful for you. If I use any weird jargony phrases that you don't know, please feel free to send a message to Worthington, Park, or Worthington Libraries um, via the website and I will make sure I get back to you and I'll make sure I explain it better in the future. Okay. All right. So we are going to talk a little bit about how I set up story time. I usually do centers. That's how kids learn best is when they're doing hands-on activities that they get to choose like how long they want to do it and which one they move to next. So at home, I'm setting that up for my preschooler because, yep, I'm doing this at home too. Um, I'm setting it up as here's our activities and we're, we'll introduce a couple on, say, Monday. And then we'll introduce a couple more on Tuesday. And then we keep coming back to the ones that we've already introduced so that by the end of the week, she can do all of them independently. Um, if you have bigger ones at home that are also trying to do school, I hope this helps you because I also am in that boat. All right, so let's talk about what I was thinking about for this week. I don't know if you watched Miss Jenny's story time this week, but she is talking about feelings. And so we're gonna tie into that and we're gonna do some centers related to feelings. I tried to think of this as we have a lot of feelings getting ready for school and this is all so different for all of us that we probably have a lot of feelings we need to talk about. One of the things we need to work on with kids is identifying feelings in other people and beginning to label feelings themselves so that they can express what they're feeling and maybe, just maybe, have a few less temper tantrums. Yep, because if we can't express how we're feeling, it just comes out in mad for most kids. Um, sometimes for kids it comes out in stomach aches too or headaches with bigger kids. So we need to learn to express those feelings so that we can control those feelings and work through them a little bit better. So one of the things that we are going to do this week in my house, and I hope that you like this idea and are able to implement it in your home, is our language arts center and some of our sensory center is going to be making a calm down corner in our house. So it's going to be a space where there are safe options for the child to do when they have a lot of feelings. So even if it's just that they're overexcited and they need to calm down a little bit, like maybe they're happy feelings, but they still might need somewhere to take it down a notch. So I was thinking about this and I thought it would be really fun to include our preschoolers in the making of our calm down corners. So for us, the language arts component of it is that we have begun making, these are really well drawn, so try not to be jealous. Uh, we've begun making little cards that they can choose from their activities. And then I had my daughter help me decide what activities we could put on here. Um, 
what I could draw up here to help her visually know what it says because our pre-readers are going to need some visual clues. So if they're not reading yet, they need to be able to tell based on the picture. So she colored in the pictures. Didn't she do a pretty job? I know. Uh, and then I drew them and I wrote what it is. So we have some really easy ones that require nothing like counting up or down to 10 or bigger numbers if they're better at bigger numbers. All right, we have things like coloring. That requires very little. You need like maybe a notepad and some crayons in the, in the box. So what we're going to do at our house is we're just going to put a little box in a corner and then we're going to make a poster with all of these options that they can do. Um, some of the other options that don't include needing anything physically is if you were to do yoga poses, um, breathing techniques, one of our things, oh, let me find it, sorry, is box breathing where you breathe in for four, hold it for four, out for four, and then hold that for four. Um, my daughter suggested that making silly faces might help her when she was having a lot of feelings. So we made a card that said make silly faces. There are lots of things you can do that do not require any physical things in the space. But what we thought too was that it might be handy to have some things that we get to make together. So this would be one of our sensory components for the week. Um, sensory is when they're doing like hands-on and they're getting feelings that they might not get normally. So one of the things that we did was we made, this is a stress ball. Um, we made this one with rice in it and you can see it's kind of cranky. It doesn't really want us to be using it this way. Um, but we just had, we had some old balloons left over from a birthday party. Um, if you have any latex allergies, obviously you need to be careful with that. If you have a kid that likes to eat everything, this might not be the best idea because they might chew on this. But mine are not at that stage anymore. So we made, this is really fun to play with. So we made these uh, sensory balls. And then you can also do, you can fill it with flour. And that has like a really nice soft feeling. Um, if you want, do not like using food in ways like this, if it feels wasteful to you, you can put in some sand. Um, I'm really just trying to think of anything you might have at home already. I don't want you to have to go buy a whole bunch of stuff to do preschool because our kids are going to learn in no matter what the situation. So if we can provide them with some beautiful things um, that we found around the house, that's fantastic. That's even better. So we're just reusing balloons. I'm going to fill a couple more of these and make some other ones this week with my daughter. Um, the other thing that we went ahead and did to get started is I don't know if you have watched any of my story times but during one of them we talked about making sensory bottles and so to make a sensory bottle you just put in some water and food coloring if you don't have food coloring you might even be able to use like a little bit of colored juice or um oh I'm trying to think I'm sure there's some other options dissolve some chalk in there something a uh, little drop of paint would work too <laughs> I'm really trying to make you not have to go to the store I don't know if you notice uh, take an old bottle uh, plastic don't use glass please I don't want a broken glass um, and then especially if this is where we're feeling a lot of feelings and then just put in um, some oil at the top so the oil and the water we know as grown-ups will not mix together so we also stuck in some glitter because it makes it more fun. So when you give it a flip and give it a flip, you can watch it settle out. So we did a couple of these as part of our sensory and we're going to make some more as we go through the week. Um, but sometimes some friends do really well if they're just watching it, watching the bubbles come back up, watching the glitter settle out. You could put beads in here. You could also do a rice bottle like this where it's um, filled with rice so you can just hear the noise too. There's lots of options for sensory bottles. So I don't want you to end up lost in the world of Pinterest. I definitely don't want you to feel like whatever you're doing is not enough because it is. And all we can do is the best we can do. So there are a lot of ideas on Pinterest for calm down corners. It is up to you. If you just want to do something simple, you can just have a little coloring station, something like that. But that's our language arts and our sensory for the week. All right. I was also thinking that a fun idea would be to go outside and go out into nature and go for a walk and get just a change of pace because sometimes I think we get a little bit stuck on being in our walls. And if we just step out, sometimes that helps a lot. 
So one of the things I was thinking is that you can use things you find in nature to create an art piece together. So if you find a bunch of fallen leaves, you can start to arrange them. You can make shapes if you're practicing shapes. You could make letters if you're practicing letters, or you can just make a pretty design that repeats um, and see what you can make together. And then be sure to take a picture of it because guess what, next time there's a win, you'll lose it. All right, so that was our, um, our science idea is getting out and getting a little bit of a walk and finding some pieces to make a natural piece of artwork. That's also an art idea, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is. Okay. We've gotten a couple centers down. Let's do a few more. I was thinking that if you have any leftover plastic eggs laying around your house, um, which they might be a hot commodity, I don't know. Maybe you still have them. I'm not great at cleaning out, so we had them a lot. All right, then you can make these silly face emotion eggs. So, oh man, that one's a pretty angry one. What do you think, angry? Yeah. So what you can do is, grown-ups, you can just draw eyes on one half of the egg, mouths on the bottom, and you can try to make it look like different feelings. I saw one teacher that said she used uh, emojis as her inspiration for her mouths and eyes. Or if you want to let it be a fully kid-run thing, which it does involve using a permanent marker, so, um, definitely make it a supervised activity because permanent marker and walls is no fun so you can let them draw their own faces i don't know if you can tell but that one's sad right sad is sad panda okay so you can then they can mix and match and they can play with these for a while um mixing and matching making different faces using the ones you made and the ones they made they can mix them together um and then one of my favorite activities <laughs> And aspects of this is that a little bit later in the week if they start to get a tiny bit bored with doing the same thing every day guess what give them a mirror it's a whole new activity so then they can hold this up to the mirror and then they can try to make the face themselves I know please don't screenshot that that's not cool all right so um, I love doing these Easter egg or these plastic egg activities. Um, if you don't have any plastic eggs in your house, I was trying to think of some other things you could do. You could just literally cut paper and, you know, match that up. You can make a flip chart where there's different eyes and different mouths. Um, but I am trying to keep it simple. So whatever you have will work. It'll be fine. Okay. So that's, that's all the eggs. Um, and let's see, I had one more activity and then I wanted to tie into something Miss Jenny did. So I have this guy, it's lovely, isn't it? Um, this is a Play-Doh mat. I don't know if you've done much Play-Doh mat work um, at your house, but a Play-Doh mat is nice and easy because you can make it so quickly. So I found this and printed it. It's called a Play-Doh face mask mat. I'm sure you can find it pretty quickly. If you don't have a printer, but you do have a piece of paper, fantastic. Draw an outline of a human, great. Even if you're not that good, you can just draw a circle with like stick underneath it for a neck. Yeah, they won't care. All right, so what you're gonna do is I um, went ahead and put mine into just a sheet protector that I got at the Dollar Tree. So I got a pack of them for a dollar and I'm trying to keep it at least cheap if we have to buy stuff. Uh, if you happen to have a laminator uh, because you're a super nerd, I have one, uh, then you can laminate your pages, which will make them last a lot longer. Uh, but this works just as well. And then what I did, because my daughter's also starting to work on letter recognition and sounding things out, is that I wrote a feeling up on the top with a dry erase marker. Now you don't need to do that, but if that's what you're working on, they can try to sound it out, and then they make the face out of Play-Doh. Yep. Um, if you have time and you have the things to make it, there are so many recipes for making homemade dough, and then that's an extra bonus activity because the math involved in that and the following instructions is so great for child development. But 
I was a little overwhelmed because I have a bunch of kids with a bunch of different curriculums I have to follow. So we did just the store bought dough. And so you can make their little, they can just make their eyes. Boop. Oh, my daughter's favorite color is orange. So you'll see a lot of orange activities. Not yet, almost. All right, so you can uh, make a Play-Doh mat and use the Play-Doh and make a lot of different faces. Um, you can also add like make their hair, make a shirt, things like that just for extra bonus fun. Okay, I think that that is almost everything. Now I had one more thing I wanted to show you and that is an activity inspired by Miss Jenny's story time. So Miss Jenny is doing a little rhyme called Jack Be Nimble. Do you know that rhyme? It's called, it goes like this. Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick, Jack Jump Over the Candlestick. So we made, it's super fancy, get ready. We made a candlestick, yay! All right, so we just took a piece of toilet paper. We happen to have a popsicle stick and some tissue paper. And then I'm just bloop, putting it on the ground like this. And then our gross motor for the week, which is a whole body skill. When we are talking about gross motor, we're talking about things that use the entire body of muscles. So a gross motor skill for this week is that we're trying to jump over Jack B. Nimble's candlestick. All right. You can try doing it and talk about how Jack might feel if he landed on the candle or on the fire. Um, you can try talking about how he might feel if he makes it over the fire. You can also try doing it with two feet or jumping on just one foot over the fire because those are both different skills. Um, anytime we're doing jumping activities, we're utilizing our whole body with gross motor. So we are using our core, our bellies. All those muscles are important for writing. Also important for writing is our fine motor or our pincer grip. And when we work with Play-Doh, we're really building those muscles too. So it might not look like we're learning a whole bunch with this, but I promise your kids are going to be learning so many things. I hope that some of these activities, I'm sorry, mine are ready to come back in and do more school. I hope that some of these activities are helpful to you. If you can't do some um, because of what you have at your house, just read a book. That's great too. All right, have fun. I hope that you are enjoying this time with your kiddos and I miss seeing them. So give them an extra hug for me and I'll talk to you soon.